Alla Sipa, you can start, Rama. You can start. Mm. Okay, ma'am. Good day. Welcome, everyone. Before we begin the session, dear participant, a kind information for you. Please mute your mic and turn off the video for better experience and to avoid interruption. On behalf of the organizing team, once again, I welcome you all for this one week online international faculty development program jointly organized by Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University Chennai and Lakshmi College of Education Gandhigram. Today, the third day of the faculty development program. At this moment, I would like to call Dr. M. Muttamal Chelvan, Assistant Professor, Department of Pedagogical Science, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University to welcome the gathering. Welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're hmm. audible. Good morning to all. First of all, I would like to render my sincere welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, Honorable Chairman, Lashmi College of Education, to this third day International Faculty Development Program. I very sincerely welcome Most Respected Registrar, Controller of Examinations, Dean of Faculty, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, and Secretary, Lashmi College of Education, Gandhi Gram for this wonderful international online FDP program. Next in order, with the utmost sincerity, I welcome respected Professor P. Ganesan, Head, Department of Pedagogical Sciences, convener of this FDP program, who has put hard work and sincerity effort to bring out the program successfully. Next in turn, I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Suvita Ravichandran, ophthalmologist Aravind Eye Hospital, who is very talented, highly resourceful to this FDP program, going to share her expertise. Next, I happily welcome Dr. K. Tyagu, Ashton Professor from Central University of Kerala. Sar is highly resourceful, highly learned, and a great academician. He is well known to everybody across the nation in the field of education and technology. Next, I warmly welcome Dr. M. Malaruri, Principal, Lesmi College of Education, who is a main dynamic personality to bring out the program grand success. And similarly, I welcome Ms. M. Kalaiwani, a dynamic personality, Ashton Professor, another organizing secretary, who also works sincerely for the success of this program. Next in turn, I extend my sincere and heartfelt welcome to all the organizing joint secretary and the organizing committee members, namely Dr. P. C. Nagasubramani, Associate Professor, TNTU, Mrs. K. Dhanalashmi, Associate Professor, Lashmi College of Education, Mrs. M. Uma Magesuri, Assistant Professor, Lashmi College of Education, and the organizing committee members, Dr. A. Magalingam, Dr. L. Josh Stevens, sir. Dr. P. Jagannathan, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, Chennai. Mr. F. Vincent Rajsegar, Assistant Professor. Mr. Devendra Kular Trimahal, Assistant Professor, Lesmi College of Education, for their fullest cooperation to make the program for mega event and the grand success. Next, I sincerely welcome the technical team members and all the research scholars of both TNTU and the Lesmi College of Education for their enthusiastic participation for third day FTP program. Next, I welcome Result al Shifa Fatima and all the students' friends. Finally, I warmly welcome our blood participants who attended the third day FTP program with involvement and a bubbling spirit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank for you. your warm welcome. Now, I would like to call upon Ms. M. Kalaiwani, Assistant Professor, Lakshmi College of Education, Gandhi Gram, to introduce the resource person. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Al Nasifa. Most respected dignitaries, Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Controller of Examination, Dean of Faculty, various uh, uh, heads and uh, professors from various departments of Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, as well as uh, professors, principals from various colleges, universities from in India, as well as abroad. And uh, on behalf of 
teacher education university and lakshmi college of education uh, a warm good morning to one and all present here it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our today's resource person dr sweta ravichandran medical officer arvind i hospital pandicherry she has completed her mbbs at adi parashakti medical college melmarvathur and her do at arvind i hospital and research institute madurai she is being serving as a medical officer at arvind i hospital and research institute pondicherry from august 2017 till now she has been awarded for her meritorious nature she has won uh, prizes for oral presentation on bronchial asthma during undergraduation conducted by the department of pediatrics sri adi parashakti medical college melmarvathur she has also received her distinctions in pharmacology and microbiology at the university exam by the tamil nadu mgr medical university she has won prizes in poster presentation on community ophthalmology at all india society of ophthalmology conference jaipur she has won prizes in poster presentation on ocular tuberculosis at uvea 360 an international conference held at madurai her area of interest her academic interests are cornea and glaucoma she has also involved in various extracurricular activities and she has won prizes in veena competition rangoli competition she has also published articles about kitchen hygiene and health uh, eye care in community magazines her recent uh, publication was goat eye integrated with soap pellet as cataractus lens for phaco ml application training a threat to catch up the learning curve during pandemic in Indi indian journal of ophthalmologists with this few word of introduction on behalf of tamil nadu teacher education university and lakshmi college of education on my own behalf i welcome you ma'am thank you ma'am thank ma you so much ma'am thank you ma'am now it is our time to welcome dr sweta ravichandran ophthalmologist arvana hospital to give a special talk on computer vision syndrome welcome ma'am now the time is yours thank you for the warm introduction am i audible to all yes madam you can proceed yeah thank you for the lakshmi college of uh, education for giving me this golden opportunity to meet all wonderful participants today on this uh, wonderful morning so let me share my start sharing my presentation are the slides visible to all yes ma'am okay so the topic we will be dealing for the next couple of minutes will be regarding the computer vision syndrome or the digital eye strain which is the emerging public health excuse threat. me ma'am sorry to interrupt uh, please kindly uh, uh, go with the slide show ma'am so that the slide will be visible for the people who are in youtube link go with slide yeah, it's it's in slide show only ma'am uh, you start you start from the beginning madam so that the uh, slide which you are uh, talking will be uh, larger larger in size madam sorry for the intervening i think you are share as a windows you are share screen as a window kindly share as a enter screen then the enter screen is window kindly stop presenting and go to the share screen and press the enter screen Okay sir just okay. Now you can open it Yeah Slide 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 Yes. Is so, it okay now, sir? Yes. 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 Okay. 
the topic we will be dealing for the next couple of minutes will be regarding the computer vision syndrome also called as the digital eye strain which is the emerging public health threat during this covid-19 pandemic so during this footfall of this covid-19 pandemic technology has become an integral part of everybody's day to day life it may be children's or it may be adults every one of us have a separate reason to use the digital gadgets it may be in the form of a laptops mobile phones ipads and any other electronic devices adults use for their work purposes whereas the children use mainly for their entertainment and infotainment so the only thing which is miserable during this type of this digital eye strain or the computer vision syndrome is that one thing is because it gets worsened because of the uninterrupted sleep patterns a proper sound sleep for at least 8 hours per day is very important for you to overcome this digital eye strain so our children without any specific guidelines are sitting in front of the system for at least 6 to 8 hours per day so this is our traditional classrooms our traditional classrooms can never replace our uh, virtual uh, or the e teaching that is happening during this covid-19 pandemic the most vulnerable age group that is being affected during this uh, for because of this digital eye strain is mainly the children because the children do not complain as early when compared to that of the adults whenever an adult is suffering from an eye pain redness or irritation we complain and then we immediately we consult an ophthalmologist whereas children use the system for an extensive periods this uninterrupted time without taking any break so these are the most vulnerable age group so child caretaker should be very cautious when the uh, child is using the system because the, all these symptoms are going to be temporary these symptoms of the digital eye strain which i will be discussing in the future slides once you cut off the screen time and limit their time you can easily reverse it so this uh, digital eye strain is an emerging public health threat and it has worsened even more after the footfall of this covid-19 pandemic as this e learning has become mandatory and it is the teaching technique in all the private universities schools and everywhere so whenever we are working in front of your system your eyes have to constantly focus and refocus which means that your eyes has to constantly move to and fro your eyes have to focus on the rapidly moving and the changing images and therefore they have to send these rapidly changing information to the brain so all these will actually put on so much of strain on your eye muscles so whenever you are using a computer you have to look down on the keyboard or you have to look down at your reference material and back to the screen for typing so all these require so much of the effort from your eye muscles and added to the misery unlike uh you read over a printed paper or a book this computer screen produces so much of flicker glare and contrast so these computer works were since when you are going to hit the age of around 40 years because what happens at the age of 40 years is that so this is your human eye this is your normal crystalline human lens normally these lens are flexible around the age of 40 years what happens is that the flexibility of the lens is lost so since the flexibility of the lens is getting lost what happens is that you will be having a difficulty in focusing the near objects as well as the far objects so around the age of 40 years this medical condition is called as the presbyopia where you will be having the difficulty for reading for reading the near objects okay as well as the far objects and you need a correction for it by wearing a presbyopic glasses so there is a difference in the visual demand when you are going to read 
a printed paper to compare to when you're going to read it over your computer screen. This computer screen is actually made up of a number of minute tiny spots called as the pixels or the ratchels. So these pixels, as you can see, they are going to be brighter in the center and they are going to fade out at the edges. So, and this thing is going to worsen if the image is going to be of a very low resolution. Low resolution means the image is going to be made up of only a minimal pixels, which is going to put a lot of effort on your eyes. So, so what happens is that you have a, a term called as the refresh rates on your computer screen. So normally the refresh rates will be around some 60 hertz. So higher refresh rates will actually reduce the flickering of your computer screens. So make sure that normally your refresh rates will be around some 60 hertz. Make it into 70 to 80 hertz in order to uh, experience a pleasant screen time exposure. So now coming into the topic of what is this computer vision syndrome or the digital eye strain. Computer vision syndrome is defined as a group of eye and vision related problems that results from the prolonged usage of the digital devices, which can be in the form of computers, your laptops, or your mobile phones, or your digital uh, television screens, and, and all the e-gadgets. So continuous prolonged use without taking a proper interval will lead on to this computer vision syndrome. So now we'll see what are all the causes of this computer vision syndrome. The first and the foremost cause will be the excessive usage. So as the name indicates excessive usage, it doesn't mean that you have to sit for six hours and eight hours to cause a computer vision syndrome. It's enough if you are going to sit only for two hours uninterrupted without taking any breaks is going to lead on to this eye strain. So normally uh, the children when compared to that of the adults are uh, using the computers for the extensive periods uninterrupted without taking any breaks. So what happens is that when the child is going to use like this, it is going to lead on to the convergence insufficiency and accommodation insufficiency. That medical term accommodation means your eye should be able to change its focus from near objects to distant objects and distant objects to near objects, which is called the accommodation. So what happens is that when the child is continuously staring at a computer screen, their eye focusing system gets locked to a particular target distance. So this is going to lead on to the computer eye strain. So the next cause will be the poor lighting and glare on a digital screen. So what is this poor lighting? Poor lighting, I don't mean that only the poor lighting from the screen. Also means the poor lighting from the surrounding it surrounding environment. So please avoid sitting in front of your window or behind the window because all the lighting from the windows can be covered with the use of the curtains or shades because they add up to the glare. So if there is going to be any imbalance between your uh, lighting on your mobile computer screen to the surrounding lighting is going to put up your eyes on too much of eye strain. So adjust your ambient lighting in the room. And if the room has very bright fluorescent lights, please dim it to an, uh, very smoother shades, of the, smoother shades. And during the daytime, try to use the natural daylight. And glare on the digital screen is also a very important contributing factor. Glare also from the digital screen, also from the smooth and the light colored walls, as well as the shining surfaces. So the glare on the digital screen will put up your eyes on so much of strain on your small eye muscles because your eye muscles are not geared up to work so much for the near vision work. So what happens is that this glare on your computer screen can be minimized by using the matte glare filters. 
so these macular filters will actually will eliminate the reflections from your screen surface so the next will be the improper viewing distances which is a very important cause because remember three things when you are sitting in front of your computer proper viewing distance from the computer proper size of the image and a proper seating posture all are very important to prevent the digital eye strain you should not lean too forward or sit too erect when you are viewing the computers and the next and the most important is the poor seating posture because most of us most of the computer users okay adopt and very poor seating posture okay they assume a very uncomfortable posture without knowing that these postures during a long way it's going to lead on to the back pain neck stiffness and many other musculoskeletal problems so this uh, seating posture is a very important uh, contributing factor for your computer vision syndrome remember that a very good computer station ergonomics is very is a very important contributing factor for your healthy lifestyle for people who are sitting in front of the system for long hours and then will be the uncorrected refractive errors uncorrected and undercorrected refractive errors so people who are suffering from the refractive errors should get consultation from your ophthalmologist and wear your corrective glasses this is because this uncorrected and undercorrected refractive errors are actually going to worsen your symptoms of your eye strain so people who are suffering from the nearsightedness also called as the myopia where the people will be able to see the near object clearly and the far objects will not be seen clearly and the far sightedness also called as the hypermetropia so this is a type of refractive error where the objects that are placed that at a distance are seen very clearly and the near objects are not seen clearly and then is the presbyopia as i already mentioned that above the age of 40 years your natural flexibility of your lens is getting lost leading to a loss of accommodation so or remember that these five factors are the very important causative factor for your digital eye strain so limit the usage and prevent the glare and you should have a proper viewing distance and a good padded and a seated seat while you are using the system and a very good ergonomics in the computer workstation is very important to prevent you from eye strain and get consultation from your ophthalmologist and if you have an uncorrected visual refractive errors please correct it them by using appropriate glasses or contact lenses make sure your lighting in the room you are in is bright enough okay so your device should not be too brighter or too darker when compared to your surrounding brighting so there should not be no imbalance between your screen brightness and the surrounding brightness and you have to match it accordingly so now moving on to the symptoms of the digital eye strain the first and the foremost symptom will be the headache patients experience a lot of frontal headache okay the next will be the eye strain because of the continuous tiring work people will be experiencing so much of eye strain and then there will be a blurring of vision and then as a blurring of near vision this blurring near vision is mainly seen in people who are above the age of 40 years double vision also called as the diplopia in which a double images of a single object will be seen and then is the dry eye so this dry eye is the most common symptom that is experienced by most of the computer users so you know why this dry eye is actually occurring people who you stare at a computer screen or stare continuously at a television screen usually forget to blink okay so normally your blink rate will be around 15 to 20 times per minute so whenever you are constantly gazing at a computer screen the blink rate will be only around some 7 or less than 7 because you forget to blink when you are continuously staring so i'll give you a small trick that whenever you hit the enter button or whenever you are clicking the mouse make sure you are blink during that time 
So why I am insisting you that to blink is blinking actually helps to hydrate and lubricate your ocular surfaces. It spreads the tears all over your ocular surface, that is over the eye surface. Okay, so blinking is a very important factor that is going to prevent you from the symptoms of the dry eye as well as from the other irritative eye symptoms. And then is the musculoskeletal pain. So this musculoskeletal pain is basically because of the poor seating posture. Poor seating posture for a long periods of time chronically is going to lead on to the back pain, muscle stiffness and many other. So moving from the causes and the symptoms, now a small introduction I would like to give you all about the blue light. So what are what is this hazardous blue light? This blue light is nothing but it is the visible light spectrum as you can see here. Okay. So its wavelength is roughly from 380 to 500 nanometers. So this blue light is actually present everywhere. Okay. Sun is the major source of your blue light where we all are getting exposed everywhere. The other sources of the blue light include the desktop, your monitors, your flat screen TVs, especially your laptops, smartphones, your tablets and the LED bulbs and the fluorescent bulbs. Usually people use it in the reading rooms. Okay. So the thing that is miserable here is that as I already told, sun is the major source of the blue light. Okay. But all these other digital gadgets are going to emit only one fourth of the fraction that is emitted from your sun. But the thing miserable here is that people spend a lot of time over the digital gadgets. Though it's going to emit only a fraction, the time spent by us over it is too much. So that is the reason why this blue light is affecting our eye. So remember one thing, this is the anatomy of the human eye. So I'm not going deep into it. Just remember the two things that ultraviolet radiation and the blue light. So this blue light, similar to the ultraviolet light, has both beneficial effects as well as the hazardous effect. So anything we overuse is going to be hazardous. Okay. So this ultraviolet light, okay. So this is anterior surface of the eye is called as the cornea. That is cornea is a part of the anterior segment of the eye. And this is your lens. So normally what happens is that your cornea and your lens is going to filter out all your ultraviolet radiations. Okay. So that the light does not enter into the light sensitive retina. So this is how we are getting protected from the ill effects of the ultraviolet radiations. This is when not even when you are going to wear your sunglasses. This is your normal uh, phenomena that is happening in your eye. So this cornea and the retina plays the cornea and your lens plays a very important role in filtering of the ultraviolet radiations. But the thing to note here is virtually all the blue light from the sources, whatever I mentioned, are going to enter through your cornea and then it's going to fall on the light sensitive part of the eye, which is the retina. The retina is the part of the eye which is very, very important for your vision. It contains a part called as the macula and fovea, which is responsible for your color vision and all. So this blue light is going to affect your retina and it's going to cause the medical term. It's called the age related macular degeneration, which is going to cause you a permanent vision loss, mainly after the age of 40 years. And if you are going to use the gadgets before that, it starts getting or starting at a very early ages. So why is this blue light harmful? This blue light basically it's going to flicker more and it's going to create a glare. So a small uh, this uh, track fan explains you how your usage of your smartphones is going to affect your sleep and thereby what are the health problems you're going to face. 
So remember one thing, there is a gland called as a pineal gland in your brain. Okay, this pineal gland is situated deep in your brain where two hemispheres of your brain meet. So this pineal gland is secreting a hormone called as the melatonin. This is the melatonin hormone. Okay, so this melatonin hormone is very important to maintain the normal sleep and wake up cycle. That is our normal circadian rhythm. Remember one thing. During the night time, okay, this night time will stimulate the production of melatonin. That signals our body to sleep. And during the daylight, it's going to inhibit the production of the melatonin that's going to make our body awake. So what happens is that this pineal gland is going to continuously secrete and reduce the production of melatonin and this cycle happens normally. Whenever you are going to use your digital gadgets during the late hours of night. So what happens? These displays are going to emit the harmful blue light. Okay. So what happens is this blue light is going to directly suppress the production of melatonin as I already mentioned that darkness will promote the production of the melatonin and because of this continuous blue light exposure, your melatonin, expo melatonin production is going to get stopped. So what happens? You are not going to feel asleep that night. So the melatonin is not going to regulate your sleep cycle. So remember that please do not use your gadgets at least one hour before you sleep. Ideally, it should be at least three hours, which is not at all possible. So at least please stop using your gadgets one hour before you go to your sleep. So please give a bedtime for your gadgets also. How we need a bedtime, your gadgets also need a bedtime. So your circadian rhythm is getting affected and it's going to lead on to a lot of health hazards. Remember that your blue light has both beneficial effects and harmful effects. What are the beneficial effects? As I already mentioned, your normal sleep-wake cycle is maintained by your blue light. It makes you stay alert and elevates your mood and makes you stay happier. And it helps in memory and cognitive function. Cognitive, there are totally eight cognitive functions. They include the learning, memory, reasoning, questioning, everything of cognitive functions, which is actually handled by many of the hormones. But melatonin is also a very important hormone. So the harmful effects of this blue light is over exposure to that is going to disrupt your circadian rhythm. Okay. And this digital eye strain, as I already mentioned, that patients will be having a blurry vision or the haziness in the vision, difficulty in focusing, dry eye and the irritated eyes, headaches and the neck and the back pain and the other musculoskeletal symptoms. Patients also have a greater risk of certain types of cancers. Actually, this is not true, but uh, people who actually work in the night shifts have increased risk of developing the breast cancers, colorectal cancers, okay? That is in the intestine, it's a type of cancer, the colorectal cancer. And also patients have a greater risk of developing diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. And uh, also increased risk of depression, okay? And I already mentioned you that Age-rated macular degeneration is the major cause of permanent vision loss in elderly patients. Mostly this age-related macular degeneration occurs in elderly patients. But this blue light can cause this macular degeneration during your younger ages. So be careful guys. Overexposure of the blue light can make you even blind. Okay. Because now, if you are not going to sleep during the long hours of night, because when you are using your smartphones at night time, melatonin is not getting secreted, you are not going to get your sleep. So what happens gradually, the performance in the next day, your memory level comes down. You won't be able to learn properly. It's very harder to learn. So these smartphones are ruining our lives. Okay. So... As I already mentioned in your retina, this macular degeneration and also certain studies also show that they will be causing the cataracts. How this cataract is that? This uh, 
this blue light will be causing a cloudiness in your lens. So cataract is a normal aging phenomena. Okay. So next is the pterygium. Pterygium is nothing but it is a small tissue overgrowth that is present in the white of the eye. That is, you call the conjunctiva. So it is because of the increased exposure to the UV rays. People who usually, the farmers usually get the pterygium most commonly. It is nothing but it is the overgrowth of your conjunctival tissue. Other thing is the macula degeneration. Macula is a part that is present in the retina. As I already mentioned, that macula is very important for your raw color vision. So remember, guys, smart use of the smart phones is uh, very essential for a very healthy lifestyle. Okay, because they are going to permanently damage your eyes and leave you blind if you are going to use it continuously for a longer periods of time. You won't be knowing it in a very acute and a short period of time because during the shorter periods, these symptoms are going to be temporary as you're going to modify your work, uh, work, uh, work ergonomics, your lifestyle ergonomics and all. If you're going to change, it's going to be reversible. If not, it's going to lead on to a permanent damage. So this obesity is because you're not going to sleep at nights and also steroids are also going to get produced more and uh, all the unwanted uh, eating habits will develop. This will lead out to obesity. So blue light has so much of health hazards on us. So now moving on to the diagnosis. How do we diagnose? So consult your ophthalmologist. The first and the foremost thing is the patient history. So the ophthalmologist will ask the history to the patient like whether they had been experiencing the symptoms of the digital eye strain. Okay. And uh, if they have any previous history of medical illness or are they on any treatment, okay? So because why you should get frequently checked to an ophthalmologist is whenever we do a comprehensive eye examination, we can easily pick out the symptoms of the computer vision syndrome. So early diagnosis and an early intervention is very important for a healthy lifestyle, okay? So patient history plays a very important role in the diagnosis. So please, guys, whenever you're having a uh, blurred vision, eye strain, please consult your ophthalmologist as soon as possible. And child caretakers, children won't be aware about the symptoms of the digital eye strain. So whenever they're complaining of the redness in the eyes, please take them to ophthalmologist. And if they have any uh, problems, please do get corrected as early as possible. Because in children, if you're not diagnosing early, it's going to lead on to the permanent blindness in them. It's called as amblyopia, which means when you're going to wear glasses, corrective glasses, the vision won't be like 100%, okay? The next will be the visual acuity and refraction. Get tested your visual acuity. So get testing your visual acuity means it's to know how much of your vision is affected due to this eye strain. And refraction is you have to look at what is the power of your uh, glasses or the contact lenses needed to correct your uh, refractive error. And then the next will be testing how the eye focuses. Remember that your, you have two eyes, right? So both the eyes have to work in a unison in order to produce a clear image. Okay. Anything that is going to hinder this uh, uh, work of both the eyes are going to cause you this computer vision syndrome. So we have to assess what are all the things that are going to cause this, uh, uh, that are going to make this both eyes work together. What are the factors that are preventing it? We have to rule out. So now, how are we going to prevent it? So from this entire presentation, I want you guys to carry out this. Just remember a the alphabets A to H for the prevention of the digital eye strain. First, A, take a break. B, you have to blink. C, change. D, drink. E, eat. F, forgot the digital devices. G, for glasses. And H, for humidifiers. So let's go deep into these preventive measures. So first is take a break. Continuous uninterrupted use of computers for a long hours are the main cause of the computer vision syndrome because I already mentioned you in the causes for the prolonged duration of screen exposure, because this duration of exposure is directly proportional to the amount of damage you're going to experience due to this computer vision syndrome. So just remember a rule called as the 20-20-20 rule. 
What is this 20-20-20 rule? That is nothing but for every 20 minutes. Okay. Whenever this is, I'm mainly telling for those people who are using the system for a longer hours, every 20 minutes, please look at a distance of 20 feet for at least for 20 seconds. So why in this 20 seconds is that your eye muscles can completely take 20 seconds to relax. So this 20, 20, 20 rule have been proved to be very, very beneficial. It's very simple. So when you're continuously staring at this uh, computer screens, please look at a distance or you just, you can look out at a window. Please look something green that will be even more uh, better. Or you can go and chat with your colleague during the time. Or you can go and have a green tea during the time. Why I'm telling you green tea is that green tea contains an antioxidant called as the catechins. So these catechins, what they do is they lubricate. They help in lubricating your eye surfaces. Thereby preventing you from the symptoms of the dry eye and the irritative eye symptoms. So the first thing is make sure you're going to follow the 20-20-20 rule. Adjust your screen brightness. The ambient lighting should be only the half of the screen brightness. Do not use too bright a screen, which is going to put you on a too much of eye strain. So please reduce the brightness and the contrast of the screen. And please avoid smaller screens. Because why I'm telling you on smaller screen is that smaller screens have a smaller font size which is going to add on to the misery of your eye strain. And also the contrast and the brightness issues are also there. So better avoid smaller screen. Increase the font size when you're using your uh, mobile phones. Next, coming to the alphabet B. B for blink. As I already mentioned that normally a blink rate will be around 50 to 20 times per minute. So when you're going to continuously stare at the screen, your blink rate is actually going to reduce. It's going to be like less than seven per minute. So what happens? Your eye surfaces are not going to get lubricated by your tears. So this is going to lead on to the dry eye and its uh, consequent symptoms. The dry eye will be having so much of the eyes will be pain, feeling so painful, irritative and rough. So please guys, make sure your blink has Mention that whenever you click the hit the enter button, click your mouse button, please blink, blink, blink. Next, C for change. So what your smartphone ergonomics states that your smartphones should be held at a comfortable distance from your eye level. And the viewing angle should be slightly below your eye level. Okay. So you have you can actually enlarge the font size. Okay, and the screen brightness and contrast can be adjusted according to your individual comfort. So don't use your mobile phones too closer to your eyes or too away. Okay, you should be held at a comfortable position. So what is this computer station ergonomic state? Computer station ergonomic states that just remember whenever you are sitting in front of your computer, you should have a distance of at least one arm distance around some 20 to 28 inches from your monitor. Okay. So this is the ideal computer station ergonomic. And remember that your center of the screen should be at least four to five inches below your eye level. Okay. That is at least it should be making an angle of 10 to 20 degrees. Okay. Your shoulders should be relaxed. And then your wrist should not be lying on the keyboard while you're going to type. Please use some uh, the document holder. So this document holder should be placed right uh, near your screens. Okay. Because every time you cannot be looking down at your keyboard and the reference materials and back to typing. So this is actually going to exaggerate the symptoms of the digital eye strain. So any documents that you're going to be placing for reference should be placed beneath your monitor and that is beneath your screen, but over the keyboard. So to avoid it, please place a document holder, which would be easier for you. Okay. And also please sit on your comfortably padded chair, which has a proper backrest. 
and your thighs should be horizontal and your foot should be lying flat on the floor and the proper arm support your arms should be flexed to the sides of your chest and the wrist should not be uh, placed over the keyboard while you are going to type it so all this alterations that you are going to do in your work, in your computer station ergonomics these little modifications are going to better your lifestyle okay so don't bend too much over your computers so you may not be knowing it now so as days progresses a chronic it is going to lead on to the back stiffness and musculoskeletal pains okay so please maintain a proper erect posture okay so as you can see here she is sitting erect okay she is around a uh, arm length away from the computer screen you can see the back of the knees are not touching the edges of the seat and her uh, foot is flat on the ground and the elbow is close to the body and the wrist is not over the keyboard for typing okay so these ergonomics are very important in your computer workstation so for every 15 minutes stand stretch and relax this will make you both physically and mentally well for your next session you can be so focused change the overhead lamp lighting so people who are using very brighter lamps or a fluorescent lamps please change it to the some smoother shades or the lighter shades okay because if you are going to read it read on a very dark based background on your computer screens it needs only a light form of the light sources that is a smoother form of the light sources and please change the overhead lamping to match the amount of the screen brightness okay and note that please use only one device at a time please don't be using multiple devices at the same time that's going to even more make it miserable and take a break okay take a break means remember professors who are taking a long sessions of 2 hours and 3 hours for every 2 hours please give a break of 15 minutes okay please don't have a continuous sessions for uh, 3 hours and 4 hours because taking a break is very very important to prevent you from the symptoms of the digital eye strain okay so there are few apps called as the f flux apps on your computers that gives you screen reminders to take breaks for 15 minutes set reminders on your screen walls to uh, have a break even if you're going to forget that's going to remind you okay so after completing a b c d for drink so drink lots of water stay hydrated and have a good lifestyle so drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of water per day drink lot of juices tender coconuts and all that so staying hydrated will also make your eye surfaces stay hydrated it will be well lubricated so it's going to prevent you from the complications of all the dry eye symptoms e eat eat omega-3 rich foods omega-3 rich foods means the flax seeds chua seeds fishes your kidney beans your soya bean oil and all the dry fruits okay so please have a diet which is rich in omega-3 rich foods and another thing in the e is the exercise so i'll be just telling you a normal uh, simple few core exercises that will help you to relieve the strain of the digital eye strain the first and the most important exercise will be the palming so this palming exercise has been proven to be very beneficial so what you are supposed to do is you have to rub both your palms till they are going to be warm and place your both your hands okay that is this rubbed palms over your closed eyes okay so take a deep breath so this is going to relax your eye muscles okay so repeat it for at least for do it for at least 15 minutes that's going to relieve you from the symptoms of the digital eye strain next exercise will be the massaging so massaging around the eyes over the eyebrows and near the temples so what happens when you are going to massage is it's going to increase the blood flow of the area increase the blood flow in the area that is going to relieve the symptoms of the digital eye strain next is going next simple exercise will be the blinking 
So what happens in this blinking is that you have to blink at least 10 to 15 times per minute. So as I already mentioned that during this digital eye strain, you're going to blink only seven times a minute. So proper blinking is going to make your ocular surfaces stay hydrated and it's going to prevent you from the symptoms of the digital eye strain. So the next exercise will be the zooming. So what is this zooming exercise is that you have to stand erect and you have to fully stretch your arms and you have to have your thumbs up. Okay. So you have to look your eyes straight over the thumbs and bring your thumbs closely in front of your eyes and you have to again focus on your thumb. So this zooming is actually going to prevent you from the symptoms of your digital eye strain. So the next exercise will be the eye roll. So what is this eye roll exercises? So this is a simple exercise wherein you have to look into the sky for a few minutes and then back you have to look into the ground. So you have to repeat this exercise for every 15 minutes in order to relieve your uh, stretched eye muscles and relax it. So these are the simple exercises that are helping you to overcome the symptoms of the digital eye strain. Next comes F. F is nothing but forego the digital devices. So as I already mentioned that we have to forego the digital devices at least two hours before you go, at least one hour before you go to bed. And please give a bedtime for the digital devices. So as I already mentioned that as I already mentioned that your melatonin secretion is going to get suppressed if you are going to use your digital devices during the bedtime. Okay. So next stands for G for glasses. Okay. So get your regular ophthalmological examinations done and please wear your glasses. So people who are who wants to use the computer glasses. They actually need a separate pack. Okay, your normal reading glasses may not be need, may not be comfortable while you are using the computers. There are separate uh, pairs of glasses that you should that are specially designed for computer use, which are called as the computer vision glasses. So these computer vision glasses are nothing but these are the anti-reflective coated glasses. Okay, so what is this anti-reflective coated glasses? Is? They contain some fluoride coatings on the surface. So the lenses can be neither be a glass nor a plastic. So these uh, materials are basically deposited by a gel electrophoresis method. So and uh, these are uh, these glasses are going to be anti glare anti scratch resistant, smudge proof, anti water resistant and all that. So it's going to give a clear image and it's going to filter off all the hazardous blue light that is emitting from your digital device and it's going to allow only a particular fraction of the blue light clockwise to enter into your eyes. So this is about the anti-reflective coated glasses. So a few models will be the Chrysler Preventia from the ACLR company which is very comfortable for the computer users and then will be the Eisen. So people who are wearing contact lenses. Okay. So contact lenses, like there are many types of contact lenses, such as the extended wear contact lenses, the short duration contact lenses, daily wear contact lenses, soft, hard, semi-soft, and all that. My advice would be that wearing a contact lenses for more than six hours is not advisable because your uh, Oxygenation to your cornea, as I already mentioned, the anterior segment which contains the cornea, the oxygenation to the cornea is cut off by these uh, contact lenses. So people who are working for long hours, please don't use contact lenses for more than six hours. Give a break to your contact lenses and shift on to the glasses. Okay. And as I already mentioned that using a matte screen filters. Okay. So matte screen filters are available easily on online. So these filters are going to eliminate the unwanted reflections from your computer screens. Okay, so this is going to make your uh, screen time pleasant. And use of lubricating eye drops. 
so many of you will be using many it professionals and all will be using this uh, lubricating eye drops so this lubricating eye drops is actually an out of counter drug but i please advise you guys to take an opinion from an ophthalmologist and then to use the lubricating eye drops so lubricating eye drops are nothing but they are a replacement to your tears these are nothing but artificial tear drops okay so they will be moisture and like they will be hydrating your eyes and uh, this lubricating eye drops basically contain the hydroxy that is the cmc and the hpnpm hpmc namely the hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose and the carboxy methyl cellulose okay so they help in lubricating the eye surfaces and prevent you from the symptoms of the dry eye and then h stands for humidifiers so why the humidifiers is that people who usually who work in an air conditioned environment the humidity in the air is actually very less so uh, you can know that many people who are working in this the air conditioned environment will have symptoms of dry eye it's because of the reduced humidity so during i what i advise you is during the day time please have a daylight ventilation and the natural air okay so and people who work in an air condition like if they are supposed to work in an air condition environment please use humidifiers so this humidifiers add on to the humidity of your like adds on to the moisture in your air and prevents you from worsening of the symptoms of the computer vision syndrome so i would like to give more tips for the children because though these are the most vulnerable people so whenever your children is uh, having any uh, school works or any educational works in front of the computers please parents you have to limit their screen time there is a limit for this then like if they are going to use for 2 hours they have to take a break make sure you have to tell your way like it's like your children like you have to blink for every time make sure they blink rapidly whenever they are seeing the screens because they continuously stare and the adults are aware about it but children are not aware about it make sure that you have and cut off time for the screen time and also make sure they blink and also engage your children to play like they have to spend time outdoors which is very important make sure at least they daily spend 2 hours outdoors playing okay and the modification of the computer workstation environment is very important because the glaring reason why the computer vision syndrome is mainly due, mainly in the children is because like you have to modify their workstation environment you have to look how they are looking at the computer screen make sure they are looking at a one arm distance and proper sitting posture whether their center of eyes is uh, at least 4 to 5 inches below your uh, monitor level and a comfortable chair how are they typing on all the these parents you have to know and you have to change it so the take home message from the whole presentation will be please remember the alphabets a b c d e f and g h okay so smart use of the smart devices for your healthy lifestyle so i thank you and uh, you can ask me any doubts if you have thank you ma'am thank you for your informative session here there are some queries from youtube ma'am yeah uh, nisha the other asked most of the students use mobile for their lectures in hmm. that case such i exercise will be helpful but what yeah, about but what about the seating posture and back pain issues for them how it can be avoided yeah as i already mentioned that this back pain is because of your poor sitting posture so get a comfortable seated back rested chair because it's all available in the markets so this comfortably padded straight back rest chairs are actually available that will prevent you from the future symptoms of the back pain okay ma'am i have another one question yeah uh, Atul Tripathi asks: Is computer vision syndrome permanent? How long does it last? Computer vision syndrome is not permanent. Okay, it's only temporary. Initially, when it starts, it's a temporary one. When you are going to modify your computer station ergonomics and lifestyle modifications, as I told the A to H thing, it's going to be reversible. 
but if you are not going to follow any of this modification during a longer course of time it's going to become permanent so it's up to us to make it a permanent one or a temporary one if you have the symptoms of uh, dryness or uh, blurring of vision blurred near vision or any other symptoms please consult your ophthalmologist as early as possible i'm one more question is that yeah Hema Malini has asked, is any eye affectionate associate with the diet? Yeah, you have to uh, mainly consume omega-3 rich foods. I already mentioned that all the, your uh, dry fruits are a rich source. Your uh, chua seeds, flax seeds, fishes, eggs, and uh, all these are very good in improving your eye health. And uh, there are also this omega-3 tablets that are also available. You can also use it from the local market. That does, that does not like uh, prevent you from the damage, but just improves your ocular health, okay? Okay, ma'am. Another one question. Yeah. Yes, In which way we can computer reverse syndrome is mm -hmm. reversible? Yes. Yeah, I already answered this question, I think. It's a uh, temporary symptom and it's up to us to make it a permanent one because I mentioned you about how to modify your workstation, your computer station ergonomics, your lifestyle modification. And if you follow accordingly, you can reverse the symptoms during a period of time. If you're not going to follow all that, all the symptoms are going to become permanent and there can be a permanent loss of vision and blindness also. Uh, doctor, can you thank you, ma'am. Yeah, hey, I um, have a question. Yeah, like you yes, have mentioned few eye exercise, and is there yeah. any particular time for that to do, or we can come, we can do whenever we are comfortable with? You can do it whenever you're comfortable, bless, but you can repeat it at least uh, five to ten times a day, and you have to do it for 15 minutes whenever you do. It's better okay. you do during your bedtime, and if you're doing, if you're working on a system like for six hours or eight hours, make sure you do it after every one hour or two hours. Okay, thank you, doctor. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Our secretary yeah. want to talk to you. She want to. He want to congratulate you, ma'am. Uh, okay. Anna, okay. over to you, Anna. Come forward. Thank you. A very fantastic presentation, ma'am. Thank you so much, fact, sir. Uh, the practical solutions are very good. I would be Thank happy you, if you can share in Tamil so that either you give a special time for our children and the same sir. persons so that our children's home students get this benefit. There are a lot sure. practical that they are disobeying everything. What sure, are you say? They are doing it against you. Thank you, madam. Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sir. Thank Congrats. you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Really excellent presentation, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Our uh, it is really it will create awareness among the uh, learners, digital learners of this digital era. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, madam. Thank Will you, ma'am. Proceed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, participants. Now, I would like to call upon Mr. P. Jagannathan, Assistant Professor, Pedagogical Science, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, to deliver the vote of thanks. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Today, the third day function of uh, Faculty Development Program. It is a wonderful session and morning session. Dr. Muttamil Selvan addressing the welcome address and also Dr. George sir. Uh, Madam is explaining uh, how to uh, use the computer, how to use the uh, cell phone and uh, what are the diseases coming from. Uh, this is in uh, eye level. So uh, what type of eating food. So explain in detail and very well. At the same time, uh, uh, Madam is explaining beautiful uh, pictures and slides. Uh, in uh, how to uh, prevent the uh, eyes. So it is a wonderful session. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much, sir. I'm sorry to disturb you once again. We have received uh, another three more questions. Can you please answer this? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, 
uh, one of the question is students are getting dark circles due to their excessive use of mobile screen what is your advice so actually this excessive eye strain is a major cause and for some people it can also be genetic also madam so i request them to consult a dermatologist and there are few dermatological creams that is given for the under eye darkness so they can use it and cut off their screen time for some time so this will prevent them from the dark circles one more question ma'am is there yeah. any natural eye lubricants natural eye lubricants is only your tears and uh, staying hydrated by drinking lot of juices tender coconut juices and all that that is the only natural lubricant other thing is the refresh tears that is the artificial tear uh, refreshers that are available in your pharmacy okay thank you ma'am thank you ma'am that's all thank you thank you so much for joining yeah. us and sharing uh, your expertise in your field thank you so much okay ma'am thank you so much now it's time for the next session i would like to call upon mrs k devendra kulathirumagal assistant professor lakshmi college of education gandhigram to introduce the resource person welcome ma'am thank you ma can you hear me ma yes ma'am okay thank you a very good morning to one and all gathered here and a warm welcome to all our dignitaries resource persons and participants of our one week international faculty development program it's my great privilege to introduce our resource person dr k tyagu sir assistant professor school of education central university of kerala he has a 14 years of teaching experience in various organizations before joining before he joining central university of kerala he was worked in our central university of tamil nadu tiruvadur his main area of specialization are uh, descriptive statistics and parental statistics multivariate data analysis techniques and educational research methodology our professor is also expertise in learning management tools web tools for uh, education online assessment tools mobile apps for education augmented reality in education he had published 75 articles in national and international level reputed journals and also uh, he had a successfully completed a more uh, more than 30 massive open online courses in different platforms such as coursera udemy and swayam he has published papers in 125 international and national conferences held in variety various parts of uh, uh, india he has been acted as a resource person for more than 150 workshops conference ugc hrdc and faculty development programs held at many universities and institution uh, he has a, uh, has published four books in the area of ict in education uh, yes today we have a very young and energetic uh, assistant professor in the field of education Mm, as a resource person of our faculty development program um, we are very happy to proud to be with you sir uh, and i, I convey my sincere thanks to you for accepting uh, to share your knowledge and timing with us uh, on behalf of tamil nadu teacher education university and our gandhi gram lakshmi college of education once again i welcome you sir thank you thank you ma'am i hope my voice is clear to all of you so first of all i share my sincere thanks to the dean here also is a thank you for special thanks to you Uh, the Tamil Nadu Teachers Union is the commission sir and the faculty member and and the Kalevani madam who behind the scenes to work for this program and the topic which is assigned for me is the teacher 4.0 uh, i hope you already familiar with the terminology like education 4.0 then uh, artificial intelligence iot and that. so that is a collection of terms i'm using as here teacher 4.0 it is an emerging area too. that's why i like to share the views related to the teacher of the, the future perspective how the teacher should be in the future so that is the term it's related to the teacher 4.0 the fourth generation teachers and see we already familiar with the um, uh, how the, the education things to be changes uh, from the offline to online so we already familiar with this now we are much expertise how we can go with online teaching and learning process that is why i use the term the changing the game of education so that the entire sets of the the classroom part is totally changed now previously we are using the the entire tool is not online mode now we are using the other things they are online but in the current context what is the basic uh, the essence skills that teachers need so that is the thing it's talking about the teacher 4.0 and uh, so i really appreciate the previous speaker because he has emphasized the very important points 
uh, in the case of the uh, how we can uh, give the screen time. So I can start with that particular area because even the mobile phone we have the uh, some kind of specific application because as a teacher fraternity we should aware of this also because uh, the teacher 4.0 is part of that how we can control uh, this kind of screen time now. So that's why I'm going to demonstrate with the use of one mobile applications default all the mobile phone these applications are there. So kindly limit your screening time with this kind of applications. I hope my mobile screen is visible. Uh, just I'm going to demonstrate how we can control our screening timing particularly the mobile phone. If you are the parent, you can control with the student your children's mobile screen also. Just I'm going to highlight the way to control the things. The tool name is called digital building. Uh, even the part of the teacher, teacher 4.0, the teacher should aware of it how to link this to the screen timing. How we can effectively use the online tools and all, and finally how we can use the effective way use the mobile phone applications too. And see, gently we know how to go with the settings of your mobile phone. So each mobile phone, the settings should be in different places, right? So I'm using the uh, Samsung mobile, and finally I'm using the Vivo. Um, here I'm showing the the mobile phone as a one note based mobile phone. Then the setting options available in the uh, the top. So once you Drag down, you can see, find the uh, setting options. Once you press the setting options, it goes to the all the settings of your mobile phone. It all, all the Android mobile phones. So if you are using the Android mobile phone, automatically this particular application, default it will be available in your mobile phone. But uh, most of the people is not have it. That's why I'm doing the demonstrations for this. Uh, this is also part of this limit in the screen timing. If it comes down the settings, you can find an option called digital well-being and parental control. Digital well-being and parental control. Once you press the digital well-being and parental control, you can see how much time I'm spending the time from the morning to up now, after now. I'm spending one hour, 10 minutes with use of my mobile phone. From this, I'm using the YouTube is high, then Adobe, uh, Acropod, then yeah, Lupa, LinkedIn, Facebook. So like this, I'm spending the time. And uh, main important thing, see, if it comes down, you can find out the options called uh, dashboard. So here we can limit the, the time durations of the each tools. If you click the dashboard, we can see the, the total number of times which are using the mobile phone up to date. Suppose you want to see the, the notification received, number of notifications received up to now. Or if you want to see how many times I open the, the mobile phone, you can see everything from here. Suppose I like to click the time open. From the morning onwards, I can open my mobile phone 25 times. Right? So it's so high compared to the yesterday. And see the notification research. So from the morning onwards, I got 89 notifications, particularly uh, through the WhatsApp, uh, the Gmail. I guess I got a lot of things. Now, just I'm going to highlight how we can control the time durations to use the, the application, particularly. Uh, in the mobile phone, the application which you install it, you now automatically that application is made stored here. In the Google, uh, in the digital uh, well-being, you can see this tool, Play Store, Telegram, Gmail, Google, Class Plus, YouTube, as your all the tools, it should be visible. Now, how we can control this one? For example, I like to use the Telegram for a day, maximum 15 minutes. I already limited, see? So how we can fix it? For example, I like to see the, the YouTube maximum 10 minutes per day. So what we have to do is go to the YouTube and firstly there is a small uh, the, uh, the normal flat mode. If you click here, you can find it the timing. So we have to fix the time. For example, I like to fix 15 minutes. If you click OK, so automatically it shows that the YouTube, you have the 15 minutes only. It means that per day, if you are exceeding more than 15 minutes, automatically your mobile phone may close. Suppose we are watching the YouTube, any video or audio, automatically after 20 minutes it may blank. So you could not be finding the things, particularly in your children's mobile phone. No? You can keep this kind of uh, notice, this kind of settings in the mobile phone with children's, and you can fix some password because without you, they could not be modified this settings option and all. So like that, you can fix it. So then we can limit the the usage of the screen time from the students and children's side. And this also good in the case of the teachers because most of the time we are using mobile phone only for the entertainment aspects, not for the the teaching and learning aspects. Therefore, as a teacher, we should be limited to some of the entertainment applications like Telegram, YouTube, or uh, some other tools like just I'm showing the, the other tools which I'm limited uh, to using the timing. 
YouTube, ah yeah, then next is Facebook. So I already limited the Facebook maximum thirty minutes per uh, day. So this kind of things may helping uh, to the family as well as the from you are also it's also fine because sometimes unknowingly we may spend the more time with the mobile phone. Uh, uh, particular, particular for entertainment to look onto the WhatsApp message or uh, to YouTube. So we have to limit this kind of screen time with this application. And see, there is a one more features. If you come down, you can feel the the parental control. There is a parental control applications. Uh, here you can control the work of members. For example, I my children are having the one mobile. I uh, that's not a mobile phone. That is look like a tab. I brought uh, I buy it. Uh, I brought them uh, one year before because of the online classes. What I did, I connected her mobile phone with her mail ID. So that is a mail ID. Actually, as we previous I saw I met the two children. So what I did after connecting that mobile phone, I connected with my mobile phone. So I can easy to watch what are things my children's doing from the end. So I can easy to check the the uh, settings. Uh, I can easy to check the settings of the mobile phone, and I'm easily to monitoring what are things the children are doing. So everything I can access, I can control from the children's uh, things also. So always this uh, particular tool it may helping to control the entire family screen time. Kind of use this tool. It's default every mobile phone. It will be available in the setting options. It is a open source software. Whenever you buy any Android mobile phone, default this particular application is come along with your mobile phone. So kindly use it. So this also part of the teacher four point zero. And the teacher four point zero is emphasizing that how the teacher should be in the future. So as a teacher, you should know how to limit the screen timing. How we can effectively use the mobile phone. How we can effectively use the advanced technological uh, advancements like artificial intelligence, virtual uh, reality, augmented reality. These are the advanced things. How we can incorporate the teaching practice? That is called teacher four point zero. And see, previously we can depend on the opponent to play any games, but now the artificial intelligence is act as act as the opponent and it play with us. So therefore, now the machines they may think like a human being. Therefore, it's called as an artificial intelligence. I hope you know the meaning of artificial intelligence. The uh, this intelligence may be artificial. So normally we have some kind of cognitive skills like thinking. Uh, perceptions and problem solving. These are the some of the cognitive uh, skills we have. The same kind of skills now the machines also can do. That's why it's called as a machine learn, or that called as an artificial intelligence. Because the machines having intelligence, but it's not a real natural intelligence. It's artificial intelligence. That's why they use the term as artificial intelligence. Here the robot. See, there is a small robot. It is playing like a human being as the opponent of this particular player. So, like this, the technology is being uh, moving to the advanced level. Now, see the case. Even the children, they feel that robot is here, the close friend of, and the robot is giving the lot of uh, input. Thank you, gentlemen, sir. So, see, the children are so active when it gives, uh, when you provide some kind of. Uh, Small robot or some kind of uh, doll also they are so happy. But now the robot system, particularly so in some online market, they have uh, they provide lot of online uh, based uh, robotic, and that is cost more than fifty thousand. But so expensive now. But even though now the uh, some of the people they much depends on the robot because the robot is delivering the lecture like as a human being. Therefore, now the foreign countries they are using one of the guests in the home as a robot. So most of the foreign country, the children are connecting with the robot systems, and the robot may teach the children from this they are learning. Even in our Indian context, most of the most of the homes they having the small Google Home or Siri uh, or Amazon. So thank you once again. Okay. So now the children are using the different different gadgets, particularly in the Indian context. Even in my home, there is a Google Home product. It's like a speaker. Whenever you are giving any comments, voiceover comments, immediately the speaker may respond. Suppose like you hear the sounds of the the new films of Tamil. Once I give the voice comments or voiceover, immediately that's I am able to hear the sounds of this particular film. So like this, the artificial intelligence may helping us to lead for the better life. So damn sure this kind of artificial intelligence technology may helping in the future uh, the classroom activities also. But as a teacher. We must to aware of it. How to use this kind of augmented reality or the robotic system in our classroom practice? Because the robot is not a alternative for the the future, but 
we should incorporate this kind of small artificial intelligence technology into our classroom practice. Just I'm going to briefly uh, focus on teacher 4.0. Before that, just I'm telling in what way did the teacher face the challenges in this current context? Particularly in the current context of these online classes, our audience are virtual audience. See, I have the two audience now. One is the Google Meet audience. I have the other audience in the YouTube. So I'm having the two virtual audience. I don't know any people in this group. Only few of them I know their faculties. But the students coming, I do not know. It means that the audience are not familiar for me, not at all familiar for me. Even I cannot see this audience directly. It seems that the audience total is virtual. Uh, that is the main challenge for me. So I cannot be able to go with this some kind of face-to-face -face contact uh, in this current context now. The next is the virtual tips. We are always connecting with the two virtual. Now I'm connecting the two virtual tips. One is a Google Meet, the other tool is a YouTube live stream. So like this, we are connecting the two virtual tool, uh, tools uh, in, this, in, the, in the particular class itself. And we have a lot of mobile devices. Even I am using the laptop. I hope you are using a mobile phone. So we are always connecting with the mobile device. Don't think that mobile devices represent only the mobile phone. Mobile devices, here I am focusing on the devices which is mobile, mobile movement. So, for example, laptop, we are able to carry and move to one place to other places. So, which of the devices is able to carry to one place to other places? That's called as a mobile device. So, the three challenges that teachers are facing, because we always connect with the mobile devices, we are always using the virtual tools, we are always using the virtual audience, we are always connecting with the virtual audience. Then, how we can survey the future as a teacher? So, for this, just I'm going to tell you what is exactly teacher 4.0 represent in sense. As the teachers of the future, we should strengthen and we can accuse the knowledge, particularly the function skills, to use the industry 4.0 technology. I hope you know the meaning. What are the technologies made from the industry 4.0? There is a great uh, changes happen in industry revolutions. So there is a, the fourth industry revolution. It is called as artificial intelligence, virtual reality, argument reality. This kind of lot of changes. The pedagogical this kind of much industrial revolutions may happen to be in this society. Suppose if we incorporate that kind of advanced technology into our pedagogical transactions or our classroom transactions, that is called education 4.0. In the education 4.0, if you want to deal as a great teacher, you should be aware of all the tools. You should know how to use the, school, uh, the tools. You must be aware of it, how to control the tool also. So these are the basic skills is need for an hour for the teachers to survey in the future. That's why I'm using the term teacher 4.0. And now the current context, there is no two words. And normally we are thinking about the physical world and the cyber world, like the virtual world. But in the current context, we cannot divide the physical world into cyber world. See, now I, I am sitting in the physical atmosphere in my room, but I'm connecting with the nearly 28 participants in the Google Meet and 82 participants in the YouTube Live. So what it mm -hmm. represents in the sense, I am connecting physically. I am in the rooms physically, but I'm connecting with the people virtually. That's the cyber world I'm connecting. Therefore, we cannot divide the, the physical world differently and cyber world. We all to this with blending. The physical world and cyber world interactions now is blending each other. So that is why now the kids are thinking about the virtual reality, augment reality, because the virtual reality and the augment reality is talking about that kind of pedagogical, uh, that kind of integrations from the this time moving to be the next thing. And the great advantage of the, the education 4.0 that is called BVO voting. I hope you are familiar with the term. This was a new pedagogical approach. Bring your own devices. And uh, now the children are connected their own devices. They're not depend on the institution device. They can use their own mobile devices. From this, they're learning. Even in, in the future, after the post-COVID also, if the students have come to the classroom, uh, even the institution may permit to uh, use the mobile phone in the classroom practice. Previously, the government banned, uh, we could not use the mobile phone in the classroom and all, but I'm talking about in the post-COVID. After the post-COVID, damn sure I feel that the students may come with the mobile phone or come with their own device they can learn by them. That is called bring your own device. The students might come with their own devices. They can learn They learn from their classrooms uh, with the use of the, this kind of online tools, then finally they know. So, yeah. Next thing, the education 4.0. So here, the, I'm giving the education 4.0. The education 4.0 is a different approach to learning that aligns itself with emerging fourth industrial revolution. So I already 
focus uh, we should align the the education practice along with the, the fourth industrial revolutions particularly the artificial intelligence virtual reality augmented reality with that so then only we can survive these are the, the advancement technology in the case of the industry 4.0 AI represent artificial intelligence. Then IoT represent uh, Internet of Things. And uh, so, because no, I close the uh, one minute. So that happened to my phone now. Just I show you because I'm not here. Open the YouTube because just now I fixed the digital building setting as a 15 minutes now. That is why I'm not able to see the YouTube live now. now. That's why I'm going to remove the settings. Otherwise, I could not see it because the YouTube maximum time I fixed 15 minutes. Due to that, it happened. That is why I'm trying to see this YouTube. Just I'm going to cancel that one. Delete timer. Yes. Now it's okay. Now I'm able to open YouTube. Previously, I'm not able to open the YouTube because of the fixed time should be. So it may be working in a hundred percent perfect manner. Yes, now I'm moving to this. And just I'm going to throw the some of the input related to the difference among the, the industry revolution. The industry 1.0, because now, now we are talking about industry 4.0, but we must have aware of it what is. In this 1.0, what is in this 2.0, what is 3.0? That's why I'm giving small brief what is exactly 1.0. The industry 1.0 is talking, uh, it's um, basically based on the, the uh, steam power or water power based technology. Uh, it's uh, working with the mechanical production based. On. The industry 2.0 it is a mass production, particularly it's meant for the, the electric energy. Because uh, nearly 20 years, 30 years before, we must do depends on the electrical energy. Energy. Then industry 3.0, before 10 years before, we have IT because a lot of field already the IT is uh, enabled or our IT field is embedded. That's why we are connecting with the most of the things with automated services. That is called industry 3.0. But now the industry 4.0, it is called cyber physical system. That is why I call artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality, augmented reality. This is called cyber physical systems. We cannot debate the physical world and cyber world. We can think about how to blend effectively the cyber and physical world in the case of the industry revolutions. So that is only talking about the industry 4.0. So while thinking about the industry 4.0, parallel, we must think about what is education 4.0. Uh, this slide, you can see the difference among the, all the uh, educations, the generation. The education 1.0, it is uh, purely based on the lecture and memorization based. It has happened uh, nearly 50 years before. Even the some of the schools still they following the lectures and memorization things only. The education 2.0 is talking about internet enabled learning. It's already available in the case of the Tamil Nadu 20 years before, uh, not, not 15 years before it's the internet is available. But some of the rural areas still the internet is not reached 100 percent It will be problem. Uh, in the education 3.0, it's a knowledge-based education, like we are having the some of the WhatsApp group from the we are sharing the knowledge, uh, we are getting a lot of input from the dot of social media platforms. So these are things called knowledge based education. Now we are in the education for funds. That is called innovation based education. We should involve, we should incorporate some kind of innovative approaches, particularly for the industry revolution approaches like augmented reality, virtual reality and other things. That is talking about the education for funds. Now I'm directly shift from the education to the teachers because my topic is much focused on teacher 4.0. The previously, the teachers, one point, the first generation teachers, they are much concerned with teacher centric, test centric. But if the teacher centric parallel, they are much concerned with test centric and standard curriculum they follow. So the teacher 2.0 is like the personalized uh, learning. It may happen nearly uh, 15 years before and performance based. Even uh, still, we are using some kind of viva was or some kind of practical based approaches we are already using. And uh, even Previously, we have some kind of technology advancement. I'm talking about 10 years before. That technology advancement is also me helping to learn anywhere, anytime and anywhere. That is called if you're connecting the, the Web 2.0 integration. I hope you know what is Web 2.0 uh, tools. Uh, which are the tools may help you to read and write or upload, download features. That tools may call this here Web 2.0. These two uh, better example WhatsApp, Gmail, uh, blog, and Wiki, these are the tools may come with the Web 2.0. If you're connecting that particular tools into a teacher pedagogical practice, it's called as a teacher 2.0. It means that the teacher should have a web 2.0. Uh, the web 3.0 is third generation web. It's normally we may call as a read, write, and execute technology. There's an high level of technology. As a teacher, uh, now we consider the previously the 
third generation teacher, they constantly the protective assessment laws and student education model. This are the area they much focus on. But now we have for each day for sharing the views or sharing the idea, we should think about the innovative because the students are better than us now. Uh, because now we are uh, dealing with the Z generation now. I hope you know so what is the difference between the X generation, Y generation, what is Z generation. Now we are discussing everything and we are delivering the lecture with the Z generation. The Z generation people are very much short compared to the X generation and Y generation people like it. So B courses when you're going to teach, deliver the lecture, your lecture should be, each day should be innovative. You could not use the same content for the past, uh, for the 10 days. The students may feel uh, this is an we already talk to the 10 days before. Who is coming and deliver the same lectures now? So like this, the people think boring. Therefore, we always update from us. That is also the main part, the main thing about the, the teacher 4.0. And just I'm moving to the some of the demonstrations. Uh, I hope now you understand what is exactly 4.0. The teacher 4.0 represent those the teacher well versed in the advanced technology like artificial intelligence, virtual uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, robotic system. They people call us in teacher 4.0 because in future that technology only occupied with the entire education surrounding. So these process we should update some of them. And this is the things I'm already talked here. And this is the way the paradigm it happened to the education 4.0. Demand to let instead of his supply let. So previously we are thinking about the supply education only, but now we are thinking about to demand based. Now the teachers are joining the course based on the demand and competency based instead of the knowledge based and uh, lifetime learning instead of your front load learning. So we saw this pedagogy change may happen now. Now previously we are learning the programs. Now now we are learning the uh, courses. See in the in the case of the MOOCA. They given the as a course only, not a program. Now they uh, some of the institution they come forward for the MOOC. There is a difference between the MOOC and MOOC. MOOC represents massive open online course, online. Open. But now the some of the institution they thinking about the MOOC massive open online programs. For example, BA is the program, and the BA we have a lot of papers on like uh, psychology, philosophy. This is called as a course. Previously, the MOOC is available only the courses only, like we can study the psychology courses or methods of teaching courses, like this we can much focus on the courses. Now the MOOC platform, they're thinking about the programs uh, in stock here courses. So like this, it may be a little modifying and most of the content delivery, even if you see the Moodle platform, any platforms like uh, Coursera or yeah, any platform, the approaches of content delivery is a modular approach, not in a content approach. They are giving the content as a model approach. Um, so, of course, when you're using the technology advancement, apparently there is a disadvantage, but only the things the teacher, if you're not updating, the pupils may grow with that. Okay, because based on the technology advancement, we must be updated, and we should be aware of what is the advantage, disadvantage, and we have to be equal the things. That also is much important. And uh, there is a Mac Kingsley uh, quarterly, uh, this is a one article. I find it a very good article. From this article, it's discussing about bad machines could replace humans and bad they can. So for this, the, there is a question from Divya Vasanakumar. We put the question, what are the disadvantages may arrive due to the education uh, 4.0? For this, this is a great answer because the robotic system or machines, it not be occupied 100% in the case of education. That is why I'm showing this is a small report. See. This is a regular mark represent. It's not possible to inter interpret the uh, the machines or the robotic systems. The blue color, wherever it's possible to interpret, we can use it. Now we can see the different sectors they given, like accommodations, manufacturing, agricultures, uh, transportation. So everywhere they're highlighting the last one is the education services. In the education services, managing by others is not possible to the machines. Then applying expertise is not possible. Stakeholder interaction is not possible, only the possible, little possible, because the, the green color is the moderate level. Like processing data, data collection purpose, we can use the this kind of augmented reality, so this kind of artificial intelligence. Therefore, we can easily to find from here, from this report, in the classroom practices, the missions cannot, uh, what is that, replace the teachers. It's not possible. Only it's possible when to the other sectors, like agriculture, little possible. Transportation is possible, retail trade is possible, something is possible because they're given some kind of dark green color. 
but again, the accommodation food service is possible on the artificial intelligence skills. But in the case of the education practice, it is not possible uh, 100%. Uh, it's not even 100%, it's not 50% also is not possible in the case of the emerging countries. Just I'm going to lead some of the demonstration how the artificial intelligence working and how we can update the, the kind of artificial intelligence skills with the use of this kind of tools. Just I'm going to focus in the tools. Further, just I'm moving to my browser. The first tool I'm, which I'm going to focus in here, auto draw. Please kindly note the tool auto draw dot com. Auto draw dot com. It is the Google one of the Google advancements. Uh, now that Google is doing a lot of experiments in the case of the artificial intelligence, that is one of the um, um, experiment. So we are already familiar with a lot of um, whiteboard tools because uh, as we want to connect with uh, any online classes. We are much depends on the back of whiteboards, virtual whiteboards. But here I'm going to focus in how this virtual board can act as here artificial intelligence. How the artificial intelligence here they incorporate in this whiteboard. So as all of us knows, the, the basic uh, tools like a drawing, uh, the type, uh, sort of the fill, the color, the making the shape. So these are things we are already familiar. For example, if you want to shape, select the uh, shapes. These are things we are already familiar with. This kind of things we support into any virtual platform, right? Many virtual whiteboard system. But now, just I'm coming back to the, the news page. I'm going to focus on how the artificial intelligence now they incorporate the whiteboard systems. For this is this example. There is a tool, the first tool, there is a black color up. I hope you are seeing this black color up. That is called auto draw. Auto draw. Just I'm selecting this pen. So this pen is called uh, Argument Reality Based uh, Features. Now after this, now I like to draw a car. For example, I like to teach car function or car how it will be. What are the parts of the car? I want to teach the student. For this, I, I, I'm not good expertise in the drawing. Therefore, just what I'm going to do, just I'm going to do the sketching. Please kindly do, kindly check. I'm going to do some sketching here. This is only the small sketch I'm doing. Like I put some sketches. So the sketches, once I did my end, automatically you should see there is a top. Do you mean? So automatically my system suggesting some of the images which I intend to draw. So my intention to draw a car. Now you can see lot of cars, lot of vehicles is available. So I like to show this car, I can select this car. Suppose my intention is not this car, I can move this car. So like this, we can show any car as we like. So now we can see the different different cars. Suppose I like to teach the uh, like uh, fire engine. So just I can open the fire engines or any lorry, any type of car. So here, what is the tools may help me? Gently, I'm not good at all to join. But once it did a small sketches, automatically my system that misses my website is able to understand what my intention to draw this particular uh, sketch. Automatically showing this, this or the diagram you intend to draw, you can select as you like. Suppose I like to minimize it, I can keep it minimizing, I can keep it somewhere. I can keep it, you can track it any places under. Like just I like to draw another image. So here I'm going here. Suppose I like to draw a book. So you can select this other draw symbol and you can draw it. Just like I'm doing is some sketch. See what it happened. Yeah, automatically the book is coming now. So you can select this book. And suppose you like to show this book, you can show this book. So this way, now the artificial intelligence, it's blending, it's aligned with the, some of the uh, whiteboard tools or any other tools. Even you can hear about the terms of proctored examination. How the proctored examination is working based on the artificial intelligence. So now proctored examination, I hope you hear the terms, even some of the university now, they like to go with the proctored examinations. Uh, like uh, uh, during the examination, whether the students are only writing the examination without opening any kind of uh, app or whether the watching the books, everything the systems may monitor. So that kind of technology is called as the, uh, what is this, uh, uh, proctored examinations. Now the people are thinking about to move the proctored examination, this kind of artificial intelligence. Just I'm going to do the other one. Suppose I like to draw uh, some mountain for the demo purpose, just I'm doing a mountain. So this, I'm not at a good old, good in this case of drawing. But you can see, in the case can first, the uh, augmented reality is finding that I am intent to draw this diagram. Then finally, I can select this diagram from here. So this shapes. 
Suppose you like to download this one, you can go here. There is an option called download. You can download it also. There is a download option. You can download it and you can chat to any people. So now the drawing is very simple in the case of the augmented reality. Sorry, this uh, artificial intelligence. So this is the skill the teacher should know, should aware of which other tools may help him to uh, go with this kind of uh, uh, what is the classroom practice that we must talk about. Um, the next tool, I'm going to highlight the next tool is for semantics. The next tool is semantics. This is also another good um, tool related to the artificial intelligence. And this tool is good in the case of the language teacher because the students, particularly in the age groups of the after the 13 years children, they're not good at all in the vocabulary skills. But this tool, it may help him to learn vocabulary skills based on the game information mode, based on the game mode. The tool is Semantrix. It is also Google one of the product. And you see the research.google.com. I've opened this Semantrix. It's like a game based. Huh? But the tool is totally uh, what is that? working with the machine learning. So I hope he knows what is a machine learning. Machine learning is part of the artificial intelligence. The machines can think like a human being. So that's what's called machine learning. No, machine learning. Now, there is a two modes of the game. The game, down you are finding this things called word association games powered by the machine learning. The game itself, it can, uh, there's an abbreviations. It's like a word association game. So it's good in the case of the recovery century. Just I'm going to the normal mode, output game. What is the uh, uh, game in the sense? Uh, it gives some kind of green color term. For example, there is a tree. Then immediately we have to type the terms which is related to the tree. For example, tree related leaves are the uh, fruits. Like this, we have to type the somewhat related terms, which is related, uh, somewhat related to the terms, which is uh, shown as a green color word. So just I'm going to play gray. I've got, so now the game started. Now you can see the gray. There is a term, now it's a portal. I like to give the uh, name, what is the later words related to the portal. So just uh, I'm putting the uh, foot. So just I'm putting the word foot. Now I'm correct, that's why I'm getting 25 points. Now the next words might come. So there is a green color word, you have to wait a few minutes. There is a green color word, it's made terms. Now the next word is a plant. I like to give the words related to the plant. So just I'm giving the uh, leaf. So this also correct, I got the 25 points. Next is a neighbor. So I put the word as a friend. So like this, we have to give the words related to the, the tree. So just I'm giving the tree is a forest. The color, so I put as a white. So I got this some bonus point also. This can, because it's working like, because once I give the answer, it automatically detecting that answer is wrong. Or not. Because I, there's an answer, uh, there's a word sharp. Just I'm putting this a wrong answer like a sweet. Now you can see whether it's recognizing or not. So there is a wrong, that's why it's not recognizing. Suppose I'm giving the one more wrong answer, so three. Or sleep, just I put as sleep. So there is a wrong answer, it's not related to sharp. It won't recognize it. So it means that, the missiles can predict what you are giving the answer, whether the answer is correct or not. So this is manner the augmented artificial intelligence may work behind the screen and give the correct answer in it. So like this, you can play this game. This is one game. Just I'm going to skip the other game. From this, particularly when you're giving the mobile phone, you can promote this kind of small games because it is the education-based applications. It is purely based on the artificial intelligence base. It may help him to strengthen the, the vector skills of the students. And the next two things are blocks. I'm going to play the next game related to blocks. This is also artificial intelligence. Now you can see a lot of words, lot of words make sense. But I like to give some words related to this particular words which I they highlighted. For example, I like to give the words related to the newspaper. I put the news. So I am giving the words as a news. Automatically suggest it may detect that the word which I'm typing, you know, in what way the word is related to others. So it may be detecting automatically. So there's a camera. I put the word as a photo. You can see. Once I type as a photo, so now let's see if the A understand which block you are talking about. So automatically, now you can see the photo is related to the camera. Automatically, the A is to be selecting the answer which I'm typing here, you know. What is the answer for this question? It's automatically selected. Then finally, the camera will be removed. It was the next level. 
so just i am going to give the the next uh, uh, things there's a color i like to give the color for the white as a answer automatically now the a to understand what is my answer which is related to that now it's the colors move so there is a summer i put as a summer holiday we can check whether they should be recognized properly yes now the it's correcting so black connected the same color all are turned into the points so because the holiday also somewhat related to that now i put i am going to type the words related to the plant so i put the leaf the automatically the leaf is words are connected with the plant it's automatically selected so like this the students might play many games uh, yeah, particularly for the, this kind of virtual game, uh, virtual uh, based or artificial intelligence to strengthen the record base skills so this also the part of the ai artificial intelligence next i move to the one more activity related to the artificial intelligence that is called uh, sound canvas this also another tool now we can see how it will be working uh, and it may working with sound as well as the uh, based on your direction also you can control the mouse pointer with your body action itself just i'm going to show the sound canvas tool i open the sound canvas this is a drawing based tool but now you can see how the argument artificial intelligence how it will work here so see the sound canvas you can see the now this is called a experiment now the a uh, it's a starting stage in the indian context this is a google product now the google is doing wonderful things in the case of the uh, artificial intelligence just i'm going to start play now you can see uh, there is a pen automatically there is a pen uh, suppose you like to close the pen down you can draw it and i can able to hear the sound but you cannot able to hear the sounds because i am sharing the same screen that's so why you are not able to hear the sound right but i am able to hear the sounds right this is a normal this is like a normal uh, whiteboard but now i am going to convert the normal whiteboard into the the body tracking see there is option for body tracking just i am going to the there is a keyboard mouse base i move this body once it put us in body it has to to open my camera now it asking to allow my camera uh, so just two minutes as i'm already thank you for doing it us it takes little time to direct my camera so it's detecting so once it's detected my camera the views may comes here now you can see i hope you are seeing my screen you are seeing my face in, uh, face here just i'm going to clean it here now i'm going to draw a draw a diagram i didn't do so i didn't touch the any script this kind of note just i'm coming down there is a shortcut they given some shortcut because i'm going to enable the pen for this i'm using the shift key shift key right now the pen is ready i'm going to draw i didn't do anything so in my hand is nothing so based on my body shapes i am writing now see and this is standing the mouse is standing the same places just i'm going to draw so just i'm just i'm doing some kind of an edit in my screen so based on the body shaking itself i didn't do i didn't touch my systems i didn't touch my systems now i hope you're seeing it here yeah. so this is this is the way the proper examinations are working now you can see how it will working this and just i'm going to stop this one even we can go to the full screen and uh, just i'm going to close it yes so here the how the game is working the sense uh this is a part of the artificial intelligence uh, even the proctor examinations like the computer how it's detecting how i'm writing and how it's writing see based on my body shapes i'm writing now um while writing the systems based on your body based on the body shaping on its typing here so automatically the system it predicting or it may monitoring what you're doing from your end suppose if you are opening any certain that indicate inform to the the host teachers uh, the students the particular students is opening the other tab or he is monitoring the the textbook like this easy to predict so this is a small example i quoted here how the systems automatically may draw based on your shape so from this the teachers may easy to understand whether you are copying some textbook or if you copy your writing here this time you just see this the tool so this is another of the proper examination also more right uh, there is a question from the uh, participants uh, 
can we customize this birds games in semantic no no it's not possible it is automatically uh, it's working with the ai but in very soon within one year or two years and uh, they can do that kind of option they can control that kind of option because now the it is as a trial mode it's a beta version only is available now very soon the google may uh, give this platform they give this kind of artificial intelligence to be the normal tools like a google jamboard even they can talk this kind of thing with google mix so we can expect very soon. um now it's a starting stage of it now we can't able to customize the word games now. so what, what is the games what are the the words which is already existing that we have to do they have to use that and there is a other one cube so there is an cube so it is based on the uh, ai but it is good in the case of the children it's not good for the in the case of the higher education it is only good in the case of the, the schools level so see this was another game we experiment artificial intelligence experiment so made with the google this was another google product let's draw now here the children may draw something say there is a uh, nobody is telling that you can draw a traffic light so this year guidance is given by the robot and so like a machine is giving the uh, instruction to me now as a child for example i am the children i have to draw a traffic light within a 20 seconds even once you draw once you do the sketching itself artificial intelligence may detect whether it is a light or other things it automatically detecting just i am going to start now my intention to draw a traffic light just i'm going to got it i'm going to draw a traffic light you can see just i'm putting like this so toothbrush so it may recognize like a toothbrush or a brush or something but i this not like a traffic light so just so it's wrong so i did the wrong attempt it's not correct so the next is here like a paint can so i like to draw a paint can automatically the systems me finding the so now it's a paint can so now it's finding that i did a paint can it's correct like this okay so now the paper clip so just i'm going to open it uh, draw a paper clip so just i'm trying here it may be wrong so it recognizes a square only you can see that the predictions now the artificial intelligence predicting like this notebook tent like this but it's not the answer of the paper clip then i'm really saying that your answer is wrong like this now the system itself it predicting or it may uh, uh, it is ever it is like a evaluation now the system evaluating my drawing skills so here how it working through the machine learning through the artificial intelligence or what you know so with semantic can you able to draw any geographic diagram uh, sorry the semantics only for the word game yeah? word game is sure but there is a tool that is i am focusing as here the sound canvas one, that is only for the the diagram based so there is a four tools which i am discussing the diagram based tools are auto draw you could draw as the sound canvas but the semantics is a tool is purely based on the word association word a word like a language based tool. Yes. Now I am moving to the um, one more demonstration. How the artificial intelligence they incorporate into the uh, game side. There is a game. I hope you already familiar with the game uh, Rock Paper Scissors. So this is a very famous game in the case of the student side. Right. This is a game you already familiar. Just uh, I am going to play the game with the use of the artificial intelligence. Just I am like the Rock Paper Scissors. Now you can see Rock Paper Scissors. Affinity. This is a website. Affinity. dot com. If you open here, automatically it leaves the the interface, the working interface. Now in the working interface, there is a two mode they are providing. One is a two-dimensional diagram, uh, so two-dimensional game or three-dimensional game. Now I am going to play the game along with the robot. So now I am already telling that the robot is the artificial intelligence here, and plus the I am failing. So see, in what way the artificial intelligence it may align with, uh, it may integrate with the gaming features. uh some of the education teachers also very soon this kind of uh, advanced technology it may comes to it may integrate into our day to day classroom transaction also we can expect this and this is a game this is a game based uh, artificial intelligence i am clicking here the center there is a two hand you are seeing for example the left hand the left hand is mine the right hand is the artificial intelligence so that like this robotic hand no? it is artificial hand uh, that is uh, working with artificial intelligence that's like a robotics the left hand the brown color hand is mine 
So we already familiar with the the loss, the roots of the cake. Uh, paper beats rock. Rock beats a scissor, and scissor beats a paper. This is a logic. Now here, as a person, I like to go with the scissor. Therefore, I'm selecting the scissor. Now you can see. Once I select the scissor, my hand is showing the scissor. My hand is a scissor, but the robot is predicting as a uh, rock. Therefore, in this case, who is the winner? The rock beats the scissor. Therefore, the robot is the winner. Now you can see. The robot is a winner of this round. The first round, the robot is a winner. Now the second round, I am going to think that I am going to select as a paper. So I am selecting as a paper in the second round. So automatically the paper sign. But now you can see, uh, robot is predicting as a scissor. So therefore, this round also who is the winner? Robot is the winner. So the robot and the paper is a scissor cuts the paper. Therefore, the second round, once again the robot is winning. The third round, I am going to select as a uh paper once again we can see what it happened yes now this round both is tied so because i am showing the um i am showing the uh paper robot also showing this paper so therefore both is to be a paper so both is a paper that that round is tied happen now see how the artificial intelligence is working in this particular game so it's a very good manner they construct in this game it is a game totally based on the artificial intelligence. I only expose this in the area. With the time can touch, I'm skipping this game. And just I'm moving to the, the other advancements in the case of the, the classroom practice aligned with the education 4.0. Aligned with the education 4.0. I'm coming back to the Yes, just I'm coming back to my mobile screen. Yes. Now I hope you have seen my mobile screen. Yes, I'm going to show uh, some of the tools which is related to the artificial intelligence. Because sorry, argument reality. Because that's also part of the feature four point zero. The teacher should have aware of it, how to use it, how to control this sort of things. Just I'm going with the. <coughs> there is a folder AR VR. I'm opening. So I'm having lot of tools related to the argument reality, but I'm going to show only some of the demonstrations related to the argument reality. So see. I am already may emphasize that there is no difference between the real layer, uh, that's called physical layer, as well as the uh, cyber layer. Now I am doing the demonstration with this example. I am going to make it some kind of augmented reality experiences in my room itself. This is my room. Here I am going to generate a solar system. Now you can see there is a tool I am using AI solar systems. Immediately my cameras may open. So immediately my cameras may open. I'm keeping these YouTube lives separately. Just I'm going to pick the solar system. Now you can see the solar system. In my room, you are seeing the solar system. I hope you are seeing the solar system. Just I like to zoom the solar system. You can see the solar system. Now the sun, you can see the sun. How the Mercury is rotating. Uh, where is the asteroid belt? Where is the Jupiter? So this is where the education now is very simple. It's a meaningful option. Previously, if I want to know about the solar system, I can refer, uh, refer to what is there. I can see some of the textbook point from the two dimension. But now I can see this, the virtual reality uh, through uh, what is there. This kind of uh, um, abstract concept in a concrete manner through this kind of course. From this, you can, I can easily understand where is the sun is rotating, whether the sun is rotating or other tools or uh, other plants are rotating, or uh, uh, which is the planet is <coughs> very near to the sun, which is the planet is so far away, sun. Everything you can see from here. Just I'm going back to the same tool. There is other options from planetarium. I'm going to create a planetarium effect in my room itself. I'm clicking here. You can see the planetarium. So you are seeing the Mercury in my room. This is for the Venus. Even you can minimize it. Even you can minimize it. Not working these things. So I can minimize here. So you can see the, the Venus. Now you can see the Earth. This is the Mars. This is the asteroid belt. This is Jupiter, this is Saturn, Sorry. this is Uranus, this is Neptune, this is Pluto. So like this, we can teach any kind of uh, or abstract concept, particularly for teaching this kind of uh, solar system is very much complicated. But we can teach very complicated subject in a concrete manner with this kind of augmented reality is very simple. Just I'm going to show the other tool, which is related to the augmented reality. Uh, I'm going with the uh, one more tool uh, that is called AR Lupa. AR Lupa. Just I'm opening the AR Lupa. This um, the most of the features of the AR Lupa is totally free. 
I'm um, just I'm showing it. Uh, if you like to, I'm opening the full screen. Then you can understand it. I'm using the full screen options now. Um, here they're providing these separate headings, which different different headings features are available. But uh, here, just uh, for the entertaining you, I just went start with the uh, uh, animal base. I'm going to generate animal in my room. See, uh, I like to create a camel. So here you can see the camel. Um, and just to scan my face, you can see the camel. You can see this camel. I hope you have seen the camel in my room. Similarly, I like to add the other animals. I can open the other screen. That is a press symbol. Now I like to uh, create a graphy also. Just I'm creating the graphy. So it, it also may add it here. Yes, now I'm keeping this graphy also here. So there's a two animal in my room. One is graphy, other one animal. So you are seeing the two animals in the same room. And similarly, I can go with other animal. I can go with other animal. So this is good in the case of students, students community. Suppose I like to create here some python. There's some snakes in my room. I can able to generate a elephant uh, snake also. See, there's a elephant snake. So now the snake is comes near to me. So it comes. It's like everything is not a uh, what is that statics. Now the snake is comes down, comes near to me. That's it. So this kind of Practical, this kind of real experience we can find it from our end. So it's totally it's totally a virtual one. But the students might feel this looks like a real one. Uh, some kind of virtual tool experience they might uh, find it from the end. Just I'm going to highlight some of the education features in this tool. Uh, just I'm going back to the education features of this tool. So if I go here, you can find it. There is a separate education, separate heading. Part of education, it may help to the uh, planet as well the microscopic collections. Suppose I like to do the microscopy. I like to show the coronavirus to you. Uh, I can go with the coronavirus. So now you are going to see the coronavirus here. So it takes little time to be detecting. So after this, you can see the yeah. Now you can see the coronavirus in my room. So you can you can rotate the coronavirus. You can change the portions of the coronavirus wherever you want to keep it. There. You can show here. So kindly expose this uh, things from your end because a lot of features are available. But due to the time and uh, context, uh, just I'm showing only few only. Even if you want to show the human cell, you can show the human cell. Now uh, you can see the human cell in my room. Yes, now you can see the human cell. So if you like to see the each point, this was the scylla, this was the nucleus, this was the mitochondria, this is here as uh, centrioles. So like this, we can easy to check the, the different parts of the cell cell membrane. So every part we can locate from here itself. So even, I'm basically from mathematics, for this concept is very much difficult for me. But even the layman like me, I can able to understand uh, any kind of uh, the plant systems uh, or the cell systems. Only. So only the things that teachers must to be aware of it, the tools which is uh, related to be the latest advancements. Once you are aware of it, only we can survey in the futures. Otherwise, if we didn't survey, um, now we have, I think, nearly 11.59. So it's a time we have to stop. Just I'm going to stop my presentation with a few slides. There's a lot of slides are there. Just I'm showing the in what way the Augmented reality is surrounding us. So even the smartphone product uh, for connecting all the devices of our phone with your mobile device, that's also the part of the IoT. Even some of the places, the smart toilet is available, smart fridge is available, uh, because we can easily to check what are the things is inside the fridge, which are the things is expired in the fridge, everything we can easily to find out from the smart fridge. Smart watch is also another important output of the AI as well as the, uh, the IoT and all. The smart glasses, because we are talking about the smart toilet, smart home, smart fridge, smart watch, smart glass. And finally, we must think about the smart teacher. So the smart teacher is nothing but the teacher 4.0. The teacher should be well equipped knowledge or well aware, or he should be very excel in the, the advanced technology for gadgets. Then only we have to survive. Just I'm uh, with the time care, I mean, time packet, just and just taking the uh, skip with the slides, which I'm going to use here. Uh, just and company conclusions. Um, just I'm showing the in what way the augmented reality 
uh, it's used by the different countries. So in the case of the Open University of UK, they are using the automated feedback system. In the case of the University of California, San Diego University, they are using the intelligent tutoring systems. Uh, in the case of Arabi University of Kuwait, they are using the learning analytics. The student support services through the robotic system is uh, done by the Deccan University. Then virtual agent web systems is uh, accelerated by Amsterdam. It's uh, organized by the George Gia Tech University. Then reality, virtual reality is adopted by the Q University of Canada. Then personal adaptive learning environment uh, is also part of the project in the University of, the University of Jakarta. And online continuing examinations, even uh, our uh, some of the private universities they are doing now. Even the last time the ACTC examination they started this kind of, uh, the, even the MOOC test they conducted this kind of research. Uh, this is also run by the Steven Institute of Technology, they are already using this kind of technologies. And just I'm concluding the final remarks. Uh, so, a lot of questions are available. Just I'll give you the answer for this question. Before this, just I'm going to conclude. Uh, the teacher 4.0 is talking about the teacher should aware of how to use the tool and parallelly how we can control the, the screen time because how we the question is much important how we are effectively using this tool for your classroom practice. If you are using more also it should not be fine. If you are using less also it should not be fine. That's why I may conclude my question is with a small top is a solid. The technology should be solved. Because when we feel this food is tasty. If you are adding the appropriate level of salt only, we may feel that food is, there, very, uh, food is a very tasty one. Suppose if you are adding more uh, salt in the food, no one can take the food because they feel that why you are putting this much of salt in this. If you are adding less salt, uh, the people feel that the food is not tasty because the food taste, most probably we can predict uh, perceive from the, the salt only. So similarly, in the classroom practices, you should aware, uh, you should add appropriate level of the technology, particularly the high level technology. So using the old technology is not a good tool. You should be use the appropriate level of advanced technology to look at the, the classroom practice. Then only the students may feel uh, comfortable and they may update the ready from your lecture. And finally, I can conclude with my presentation with one word. Dental history is more important than making it. So now you can see there is a issue going on the malware, uh, like malware as well as the cyber software and so even the, the entire country is uh, fed up with the, the software uh, like the spyware that we are familiar with this. So, but we should be aware of it how to control that kind of hacking things also because whenever you are using the other devices other than your devices, kindly delete the history. Previously for making the history, we are thinking that I want to create a history. But in the technological world, making history is not a, early, is, is not a fine. You should deleting the history is more important than the making it because if you are deleting, if you are not deleting the, the history, some people may hack your information, even the bank detail and other things. So because in this, um, and finally I, I could conclude. Uh, I, I have to share the thanks to business of people. Um, I'm giving the thanks to the two group of people. One is called mission based, other one is called uh, human based. The mission based Google search, Google image. Fix up a slide share uh, and the reference on the website references and the MS PowerPoint because um, these are the tools which may help you to uh, prepare this PPT. And my presentation, I'm using a lot of tools as well. So thanks to them. And thanks to the uh, special thanks to my teachers, particularly those are supporting to reach this particular level. Uh, my guide, Mr. Sami sir, and uh, yesterday the speaker, Sibina, sir, Ram Ganesha. So all the people from uh, Baradas University. Uh, they are the uh, very inspiring teacher for me, so thank you all of them. And I share the things thanks to the, uh, the Nipah Sinivas are also from this and learn that of So And thanks to my students' community, because from them only I'm updating regularly, because they are expecting something now from me. So that expectation, I like to feel that I'm updating some of the uh, advanced technology from there. Thanks to the organizing committee, uh, especially thanks to the committee <coughs> and the Kalevani madam, uh, Thirumahal Madam and George, my students are just going to give a lot thanks and Mutamit uh, Chalam sir who will give you welcome address in the first session. Thank you all and thanks to the entire participants for your presentation. Have you other questions? Thank you sir, thank you sir for your wonderful presentation, uh, for uh, inciting us uh, the various uh, 
uh, opportunities that has been available in the technology field of technology and how it can be effectively used by the teachers uh, to enhance the learning of uh, students community thank you so much and we have so many questions uh, uh, from the participants uh, number one uh, what are the disadvantages uh, may arrive due to this education 4.0 the so main advantage if you are using more robot and uh, robot systems uh, you could not get this job that's only the problem but the uh, good thing is about for designing robot also we should be that because for preparing any kind of, for example if you are asking any question the robot the robot may give the correct answer no? for giving the correct answer the teachers may work along with the technology experts because the roboting systems working with the free support for writing the pre exercise coding technology people need a technology backend people and parallelly for giving the answer being education is needed so if you want to design any roboting also there's two persons important technological resource technological expertise people as well as the pedagogical expert people along with the education people if you are incorporating these two people only we can get the good output as a robot right so therefore uh, one way if increase the job opportunity uh, from the case of the, the technological along with the education but one way this kind of teaching professions we may uh, get a uh, lesser opportunity in the future so we should be aware of it and uh, that's why i told that we could not be uh, use the 100% of the uh, robotic system they use but it's not be possible because uh, for other field uh, the people are uh, using uh, as, uh, using the uh, device as a medium the device as a tool mm -hmm. but for us the student is our tool the student is our uh, main things okay we are uh, discussing everything with the human people human human so for this the human are is not at all be fine only the human people may connect with the human in a close bond not in the human are yes thank you any other questions sir what do you say about the problem of students who don't have the same access to the technology and equipment necessary for online education what should our future teachers do for this yeah, yeah good question because normally uh, even uh, the one month before we can see there is a report is emphasized that um, most of the indian rural area the people is not getting the, even the small mobile devices that is one side there is a big challenge but one side the technology advancements may increase so what we have do the government can look on to that issues they have to provide the the technology gadgets to children so see the previous days even the some of the government they given the each homes uh, tv then uh, one, similarly one government they given the each uh, homes so each students as a laptop so therefore the government may think about to giving the some smart tablet system only for the education purpose not for the entertainment purpose uh, that particular tools uh, the particular tablet may uh, be there work only for the education aspects based if they construct the app it may good for the, the students community and it may give from the government sector government side which may be fine because we cannot be um, provide the, the technology gadgets to the entire people from the teacher side only the government take a lead and give these uh, the education based tablet system to the, the entire students uh, particularly in the rural areas students. what might be the uh, potential long term shifts from covid 19 what should be our vision as teachers 4.0 yes so now after the post covid also i am telling that after the post covid also this kind of online scenario may further it will be really. particularly this kind of conference seminar it may go with uh, this kind of virtual meeting sometimes uh, even the classroom activities may be offline but if the institution of the college or the department like to organize a program the program may go uh, maximum two years through this kind of virtual meeting this say impact is a very big impact uh, and see what is the advantage of this kind of uh, virtual meeting and we can limit the financial things previously if i come there Uh, i can spend more than more money for the, the traveling i can spend more time for the, the traveling right money one aspect then time is another aspect so but this kind of online meeting it reduces the both time as well as the money therefore 
even the government even the us also may uh, give the uh, things that giving the notification uh, giving some kind of circular that the practice is like conference seminar it can go further to this kind of virtual world and uh, there is other changes may happen the students they may come with the mobile phone with the classrooms previously even the bar colleges the institution not allow the students to bring the mobile phone but in the future the students might come with the mobile phone they can learn by the uh, with the use of the mobile phone itself that is also scenarios may come that is why recently the us given one order uh so not a order but some kind of suggestion that uh, thinking about the blended learning so nearly 40% of content is in uh, online 60% of the offline so like this there is a lot of shuffle the classroom transaction uh, surface make changes that is the impact of this kind of covid this is the main impact of the covid nineteen. this also may follow after two years or so Nowadays, uh, teachers with the uh, uh, knowledge of technology is very essential, but all these technology uh, opportunities can be applicable in all the subjects. Of course, it may be applicable for all the subjects, but as a teacher, we should be select the appropriate event because that, that is why I told that whenever I'm going to um, give the lecture, I'm emphasizing the two important points, IQ, EQ, DQ. So the IQ represents intelligent questions. All the teachers we have the intelligent questions, we have the visual questions, so emotional questions also because we know how to handle the classes to the students, how uh, how the students should be, how we can react, everything we know. But only the problem with the digital question, the digital question uh, represent how we are effectively using and which are the tools it may helping for our subjects. Even some people they may think that for mathematics teaching is not at all possible to use the virtual whiteboard or any tools. Even some of the whiteboards, especially for the mathematics, teaching, like open board or whiteboard dot uh, whiteboard dot chat. So some of the tools, especially for the mathematics, some of the tools, especially for the commerce teaching, some of the tools, especially for the uh, language teaching. Only the things the teacher 4.0, the teacher of the future, they have to locate, they have to find the appropriate tool from the end. If the tool is not there, it is our duty to prepare the tool. I hope you are uh, getting the answer. If the tool is not there, if the, that kind of, for example, augmented reality applications or artificial intelligence applications, is not at all, uh, it's not at all in the case of the language teaching. What you have to do as a language teachers, you should develop that kind of small tool for the benefit of the students' community. So that is why now the people are thinking about the game. Even the, there is a uh, one more pedagogical approach is called gamification. So the gamification means even for the some of the subjects did not use the game game as a medium. But even though we have to think about how we can incorporate the gaming feature for the non-gaming subjects. Some of the subjects did not use the gaming, but we should to create it. That is called our creativity. We should be integrate some kind of the creativity games and uh, to teach the particular subjects. So it's possible only if the teachers can locate the tools to locate the devices, we have to incorporate the uh, the good tool uh, for the the kind of delivery. So that is the role of the teacher for Panzu. Thank you, sir, for answering all the questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your kind information. Thank you, sir. Thank you, participants. Now I would like to call upon Dr. L. George Stephen, Assistant Professor, Pedagogical Science, Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, to deliver the token of gratitude. Welcome, sir. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. Am I audible, sir? Am I yes, audible? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. So first of all, I thank all the program secretary, organizing secretary, organizing conveners for arranging beautiful FDP program and bringing Dr. Thiagusa from Kerala. <clears throat> that is, it's a wonderful presentation. Sir, respected professor, a special good afternoon to you. Sir, all your presentations were very marvelous, wonderful and superb. You talked about Gen Z, Generation Z, Teachers 4.0 or Education 4.0. <clears throat> and uh, 
uh, you spoke about the artificial intelligence and sound canva everything is very useful and significant and uh, we actually i watched some of your things and everything was wonderful really i was uh, amazing you just showed that what uh, through bodily gestures you drew pictures which were really really amazing and you explained about the application of uh, artificial intelligence <clears throat> even our professor ganesh used to say actually we wanted to have a seminar on a international seminar on artificial intelligence and uh, we thought of bringing you for that pro- that program so definitely we will be inviting you sir because you are full of thorough knowledge about all technology <clears throat> Sir, you beautifully explained about uh, that solar system through augmented reality, and about the giraffe and camel through augmented reality, and many more abstract concepts. Actually, everything is we we are taken up by your presentation, sir. <clears throat> and uh, we all know that you are an expert in the field of uh, education, but you have proved that you are an expert in the field of uh, statistics descriptive statistics inferential statistics web tools augmented reality and uh, in educational resources also so and once again i'm really i'm hard up for words to voice my thanks because uh, your presentation was such a marvelous one sir thank you very much once again i wholeheartedly and warmly and profusely thank you uh, and we will be inviting you on for our tamil nadu teachers education university for many more programs sir please do come and uh, share your expertise sir so uh, even the, the word uh, you just gave us it's a beautiful one deleting history is more important than creating history actually it is in connection with technology that is really good thank you very much professor dr tyagu sir thank you very much thank, thank you, you so much Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing. Thank you so much for Dr. Dr. Diahu. Your presentation is very good presentation. You know, even our colleague, Dr. Stephen also mentioned, it is the artificial intelligence technology. Because we are the people, so we depend upon the robotic. Robotic is occupying the whole society in their control. We are only persons who obey the robotic. because the robotics not tell any lies so yeah, that's yeah. why the people are also act just like in a robotic so you given all these things to the delegates i think all the delegates get this the robotic yeah we are the people who are thinking in the 4.0 in the 4.0 we are a people only in our bedroom that's all, all the work done by the robotic Okay, thank you for your kind information, uh, Diago sir. So thank all the yes. delegates are very well, all the much interested to know in the robotic in the future. And I thanks to the Lakshmi College of Education and the Nava Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University. On behalf of that, I thank all the delegates, those who are joined with us, and then I thank all of you once again. I thank all of you to the wonderful session, and then tomorrow also. the good session is going on it's uh, in the seven days international program thank you thank you anand thank you sir thank you thank you sir yes. thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir okay judge thank you thank you sir judge judge sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you okay 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 thank you Thank you sir dear participants please make sure to subscribe our youtube channel lakshmi college of education and i thank you all for your kind cooperation for being here and for sharing your valuable time we'll meet you on the next session once again thank you all uh, special thanks to fatima for your wonderful coordination thank you fatima thank you sir yes you concluded